Hello, hello, happy new year. Welcome back to my channel. Believe it or not, I'm actually filming this video in 2021. Yes, I know, there is a Christmas tree in my background, but I personally like to have one foot in the holidays up until the end of January, just because it's my favorite time of the year. If it's your first time here, my name is Muriel. I'm a food photographer, recipe developer, and content creator. And on this channel, I talk all about food photography, vegan recipes, as well as personal growth. A few weeks ago, I asked over on Instagram, what are some questions that you'd like me to answer? Things relating to my business, what I did before food photography, my creative process, my journey, how I reach out to clients, and my future. And in today's video, I'm going to be covering all those topics and more, answering all the questions you have for me. It's gonna be more of an informal video. I'm gonna take it easy, probably grab my bottle of water because I'll be talking a lot. Um, but if you're interested in learning a little bit more about myself and my work and my creative journey, make sure to watch this video from beginning to the end. Like any good Q&A video, I decided of dividing all the questions that I was sent on Instagram in different categories. So in total, I got five different categories of questions. The first category that I'll be covering here is my life before food photography. The second category will be my life as a food photographer. Um, the third category is going to relate to the business aspect of my job as well as client work. The fourth category will be all about my creative process. And finally, the fifth category is going to be all about my future, what I plan on doing here on YouTube, on Instagram, on my blog, and in general in my career as a food photographer. So let's jump right in and start with my life before food photography. So I've got my phone ready with all the different questions and the very first question is what was my schooling path? So when I finished high school, I decided to go into business to what we call here in Quebec a CJEP. It's kind of like the equivalent of college in the United States. I started business there for two years and once I was done that, I went to university and I studied international business and marketing. One of the biggest reasons why I was drawn to marketing specifically is because I've always been a creative person. I've always enjoyed creating things, coming up with concepts and ideas and executing a vision. So it was kind of natural for me to gravitate towards that. And international business was <laughs> just because I thought that it could be useful to know how to do business in different countries. So I was in university for three years and graduated in 2016 and then it took me about one year before I started my food photography business but I'll get to that in the next category of questions. Another question that you guys asked was what was your job before food photography slash while you were getting started? So when I was in high school and in CJEP I actually used to work at a pharmacy as a cashier and then I met my boyfriend and with my boyfriend together, we worked for a fair trade jewelry company. Um, it was a company that his parents became the distributors for in Canada and we kind of jumped in and took on the distributors roles. So we built up the website for the company here in Canada. We built up a social media following. We would attend events and it was a lot of fun. It was very interesting and I learned so much about business in general about sending emails to clients uh, without them asking for let's say a price list it was quite difficult <laughs> in moments especially that like the cold calling aspect was something that i really found difficult at the time but at the same time it was one of those stepping stones that i'm happy i went through because today i feel a lot more comfortable doing it it was also a great opportunity to learn how to design a website um, how to manage social media write captions find hashtags and all that type of stuff so we did that through un our university time and then in that first year out of university i personally started looking into doing food photography for a job and in that year out of university, that's when I actually started off my blog and had a portfolio on it and started reaching out to clients. Did you take traditional photography training slash schooling? Uh, no, <laughs> never. I actually didn't go to university or I never even took a course uh, for photography and even less for food photography in general. Most of the things that I've learned, I've learned through YouTube and tutorials and blog posts and also just a lot of practice and testing and seeing how things work. I've always been a person who loved 
tech. I really, 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 really love tech a lot. I love learning new devices and how they work. And also I've always been a person who appreciated art. One of my favorite classes at school was art. I really loved it. I started painting when I was seven or six years old. So I always had some sort of artistic hobby at different stages of my life. How long have you been doing photography? Well, fun, fun fact, my very first photo shoot was when I was, I don't know, six or seven years old. I actually did a photo shoot of my Barbies in my parents' living room. I would dress up my Barbies in different outfits and take pictures of them. But then I really got into real photography when I got my first digital camera and I was about 15-ish years old. I was always the friend who would have her camera around with her, who would spend time editing the photos, taking of her friends, and so it's always been a part of my life. And basically, I got my very first DSLR after I met my boyfriend because his family is very much into cameras and photography and he encouraged me to purchase my first DSLR. And once I got my first DSLR, I just fell in love with photography for real. I really, really enjoyed it and it's been a love of mine ever since. Now that we've talked a little bit about my pre-food photography life, let's jump into my food photography career. The first question that I was asked was, what cooking skills did you have when you started food photography? My cooking skills were quite good. I've always enjoyed cooking. I would spend quite a bit of time growing up with my mom in the kitchen. I had quite a bit of experience in the kitchen. However, I believe that my food photography career is what brought my cooking skills and my cooking knowledge to another level. On top of just doing food photography, I've also been a recipe developer for a few years now and I've had to learn so much about food and I think one of the things that personally has helped me the most is just trying a bunch of other people's recipes. By trying other people's recipes, you learn what ingredients, what flavors go together, you learn new cooking techniques, you get more comfortable with it so that when it becomes time to actually either prepare a dish that a client has given you a recipe for or create a, an entire dish, you feel a lot more comfortable in doing so. How did you develop your own style? Well, <laughs> it actually took me quite a while to develop my own style and up until quite recently I didn't even really know what my style was and couldn't uh, pinpoint specifically what my style is. I remember such a clear moment uh, maybe three years ago I was walking with my mom and I was telling her like yeah I really hope one day I can do moody photography for some reason it really speaks to me and here I am today and my go-to is actually moody photography I really really enjoy it I personally love lots of contrast in food photos and that's kind of what I like to create with my images I love deep shadows and beautiful highlights for me, it was very important never to tell myself I can never do something. While being honest with myself that, you know, maybe now I'm not able to shoot these type of photos, but at some point with practice, with time, with energy, with effort, and with just pushing myself outside of my comfort zone, I can get to that. If ever there's one style that you would love, love, love to try or to experiment with, really don't let your fear stop you or your tools stop you or your lack of knowledge. As I've mentioned multiple times in this video already, a lot of what I know today I learned through practice and through just spending time with my camera, with food, playing with the light. Okay, another question that I got which was actually sent to me by my brother Luc. Hey Luc, how's it going? Thank you for the question. <laughs> Uh, this question was, uh, why did I choose food photography as opposed to any other types of photography? And that's a very, very good question. I think for me, I kind of stumble into food photography. It's not something that I planned on doing ever. I started doing food photography when it became a trend to share on Instagram meals that we would, that you make. Uh, and so I started doing that and sharing those images on Instagram and because I already had a DSLR and felt comfortable, somewhat comfortable with photography, it just kind of fell into place and I realized I really loved taking photos of food. One thing that I have come to realize this year is that even within food photography, there are different genres of food photographies. So for example, I personally like to shoot at my home, in my home studio, aka 
my kitchen. I have done restaurant photography. I did not really enjoy it. I found that it was a bit, I felt very rushed. Uh, it was stressful. I came back home and I was overwhelmed. <laughs> In terms of commercial food photography, sometimes you're working with big groups of people and I'm, I'm a person who's very introverted and I kind of like to go at my own rhythm and not necessarily have to manage a ton of people. So yeah, I, I envision myself to just continue shooting the way I already do in my home kitchen by myself hopefully one day have a studio so we've covered all the questions in my food photography journey section so now let's talk about business and client work the first question is how did you start monetizing photography slash when did you feel ready in your photography journey to to reach out to clients for work well <laughs> my very first job was actually um, given to me by a friend it's a guy I went to school with and when he saw that I was sharing on Instagram photos of my food, he thought, you know, I have an ice cream company and why don't you come work with me and help me create content for my social media page. So that was while I was still in university and at the time I didn't even think food photography was a possible career. So I started taking pictures for him and honestly my photos were, <laughs> my goodness. You know, we all start somewhere. Like, if you think that I'm where I am today and I've always been there, no, please, please scroll down my Instagram and see all the things I used to create before. But yeah, so he was my ever first, my first ever client. And then when I graduated university and I was in that transition year where I was still working with the jewelry company I worked with while kind of figuring out what I wanted to do for myself, I figured because I'm already creating content and getting paid for it by a company, maybe other companies out there would want me to do the same. So when I figured that out, I decided to start my website, uh, murielbanaxa.com. I put on some images that I had already created for myself or for that company I worked with. Um, I had a little blog section and then I started sending tons of emails to a bunch of different companies. I mean, more than three quarters didn't answer, but the few that did, it was kind of the first step into creating business relationships with them. A lot of the companies that I contacted first, I actually did free work for them, which, you know, in hindsight, I would personally recommend to ask for just, even if it's just a little bit, just to have a monetary value associated with the work that you do. But, you know, thankfully for me, some of the clients that I initially contacted and that sent me their products for free and for which I created content, I've continued to work with them for years after um, and they've been some of my very best clients. So in a sense, I was very lucky, but also through it all, like I did spend a lot of time getting better at food photography, taking time to understand it better, to practice so that every time that I had a new contract with the company, the photos that it would get would be better and better and better. And through the years, I was able to increase, increase and increase my prices because they knew the value that I was creating for them and they saw it and they were willing to, to pay me for it. So that's kind of how I came about this career and have grown my business. So the, so the next question is, how did you start reaching out slash working with brands? What's well, kind of like the story I just told. I wanted to add a little something to this question is today, the way I work is a lot of the brands that I work with reach out to me, which I'm so grateful for. I've gotten quite a few contracts last year through brands that have discovered me on Instagram or have stumbled upon my website or have had other companies recommend me as a photographer, which has allowed me to grow my business. Once in a while, if there are brands that I really want to work with, I continue sending emails and asking if they're looking for a photographer or a content creator. And although it doesn't always turn out to work out, I still continue to do it, especially with the brands that align with my values and who I am and also with brands whose style kind of fit with what I already do. Do you feel your work in food photography is sufficient for a stable life or do you want to find another path? For me, I, I think it's definitely sufficient. Uh, I am able to live very comfortably, put aside money, uh, travel, do the things that I, I want to do. Financially, it, it's, it's been good for me. What I love about having a creative career and being an entrepreneur is the possibility of endless growth really like there are so many opportunities that you can work on and new business ventures that you can embark on for example in the case of food photography 
now you know I'm on YouTube and I'm creating videos in the future maybe I want to create a course or I want to do in-person workshops or I want to do mentorships or I want to create presets or you know there are so many other things that can be done and that's something that gets me really excited about what I do and although right now 90 9% of my income comes from client work and photos that I create for different brands. In the future, I always have the possibility of expanding and of doing different things and on focusing on other areas of food photography and trying new things. And that's what's really, really cool. What's also really nice about food photography is even if like, let's say at the moment you have a full-time job and you have another career but you really love food photography and you take pictures on the side and you share them on Instagram. Nothing stops you from doing food photo like paid food photography jobs on the side on your free time or things like that. Like I have a couple of friends who have full-time careers and are still earning side income with their photography. That is 100% possible. So really make sure that if you do create content for brands to be compensated for it, don't do anything for free, please. <laughs> All right. Next question is, how did you learn about using different platforms and growing a community in each? That is very, uh, it's a very good question. A big part of how I was able to grow in different places is my intuition. For example, on Instagram. For the longest time, I was just posting images of my food and having like writing captions that were just you know, normal captions like my breakfast today <laughs> or things like that. But then I, I was seeing that, you know, my growth wasn't really increasing. People weren't finding my work, even if I was using hashtags, even if I was tagging other accounts, it just wasn't really working. At some point, I realized that there was something missing in the work that I was sharing on Instagram. And for me, I came to realize that the thing that was missing is the soul behind my photos and the connection of the food to me, Muriel Barakisa, as the creator behind those photos so two years ago now I remember it was right before the holidays I told myself Muriel you have to show your face and talk to the camera in your stories and I was so stressed and I was so anxious about doing it I had to refilm those videos a dozen times and in the end I was really happy that I did because I got a lot of people who commented and said oh it's so nice to see you it's so nice to learn about who is the creator behind these images and this content and from then on i really realized that like i need to show my face uh, it's important for me for people to connect not only with the food that i create but also with the person that i am and that's been very very helpful in kind of growing my community on top of really engaging in other people's content uh, and in a way that's meaningful don't just write comments for the sake of writing comments if you are going to write a comment be honest, be truthful, be encouraging, say something meaningful and create connections on, on different platforms. I think not only does it help for growth, but on top of that, and for me, what is actually the most important thing is that it's so great to create connections on social media because you get to meet new people and other people who can inspire you, who can help you grow, not in terms of numbers, but just in terms of being a creator. So I highly recommend engaging a lot. And in terms of YouTube growth, <laughs> to be honest, um, I don't really have a YouTube growth strategy. One of the, of the big reasons is on top of the client work that I need to do, Instagram that I need to manage and my blog that I'd like to somewhat keep up, it's very hard to find time to film and and edit and upload videos very consistently it's something that i want to improve but it's it's been tricky so whenever i record and upload a video is when it kind of works out with my schedule it there's not much of a strategy behind it although i know i need to do more uh, and i know you guys would love to see so many interesting videos and i have a long list of videos that i want to get through but um yeah i haven't really had a a strategy in terms of growth uh, for YouTube. The next category of uh, questions is my creative process. The first question is, what is your process like in terms of coming up with shoot compositions? Um, for me, it firstly depends on if it's a client shoot or a personal shoot. If it's a client shoot, 
I'll always ask my client what did they have in mind? Is there a certain composition that they enjoy? Would they like their photo to be top down, three quarters angle, three quarter angle? What is the image going to be used for? Because all these things will influence the composition uh, that I choose to go with. In terms of myself, I personally really love to go on Pinterest. Pinterest is like one of the top for me in terms of getting inspiration and getting ideas of how to compose different types of images. I've saved so many images over the years uh, to help guide me in styling my, my scenes. And once I have a good idea with you know the style that I want to, to follow for my, my set and a general composition idea, then I kind of place down all the different items without the food, see how it looks on the camera, then put the food in, adjust everything, and start shooting. How do you like to brainstorm? Do you set dedicated times or jot down ideas as they come? For me, it really depends if it's for me, if it's for a client. If, let's say, if it's a client shoot, do they already have a, a vision for the shoot or are they really open about what the shoot will be like? Again, Pinterest is very useful in that, uh, that it allows you to create mood boards and to get inspiration for yourself, but also for clients. Sometimes I send my clients some mood boards with images that I think would kind of represent the style that they're looking for. Where do you get inspiration? Do you ever get into a creative rut? First of all, where do I get inspiration? For me, one of the big things is just other creators. On Instagram, there are so, so, so many creators that have so much talent and skill that it's an amazing platform for me to be on and get inspired. Nature is also another big source of inspiration, not only in the sense that it allows me to kind of calm down and reconnect with the outdoors but also just in its natural beauty in the leaves the trees raindrops in the forest so many things about nature really inspire me in terms of creative ruts haha <laughs> funny <laughs> it's very funny because i am actually at the moment in a creative rut i'm not going to lie the moment that i am recording this video i am not necessarily in top shape creatively speaking I think it's just because right before the holidays I was just creating tons of content and I had multiple weeks where I was just shooting Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday and those type of weeks really get a lot of creative energy out of me and it's hard to get back into it and to find a rhythm again. For me some of the things that are helpful in getting out of creative ruts is spending time doing things that are not creative, that don't necessarily require you to be creative. Uh, for me, I love watching movies, I love watching shows, I love reading, I love going for walks, I love working out. I like just not having to think too much about the content that I need to create and when I feel ready and if I have the luxury of time to kind of take time off, then when I feel ready to jump back in and create again. And sometimes it doesn't go as smoothly as I hope to, but sometimes it goes really well and things kind of fall back into place. But it's very important when you are in a creative rut to put yourself first and not to push through it no matter what, because that's, that's something that can lead you to feeling even less creative and burnt out and all those bad things. Are you inspired first by a mood you want to create or the food itself? For me, it really goes both ways. In some cases, I'm more inspired by a mood that I want to create. I have an idea of like a type of scene that I'd like to create and then I think, okay, what type of dish could fit very well into that scene. But other times it's really just the food that is the first element in the, the big photo shoot puzzle, I guess. And then once I know what the food will be, then I kind of plug in the different um, composition uh, techniques or uh, styling choices and all that stuff. Have you experienced doubts along the way or the imposter syndrome? I have, <laughs> of course. I mean, I think it is a very common thing when you are a creator because it's like you're putting yourself in a piece and sometimes you feel like that piece is not fully representative, it's not good enough, it's not, it's lacking something. So I've definitely felt that before. Other times when I felt the imposter syndrome is when I was actually writing my bio on my website. And on my website, I think it says something along the lines like food, food photographer, content re creator, recipe developer, and educator. And when I, as I was writing that, I was like, well, Michiel, you're not really an educator. An educator is somebody who does courses all the time, who has 
a bunch of things going on where they're always educating people. Um, a recipe developer is someone who maybe develops like five recipes a week. You only post one recipe on your blog per week and all these things. And even when people would ask me, what do I do for a living? I, you know, I would say food photographer, but part of me would be like, but am I really a food photographer? Yeah, f food photographer. I feel like I'm just bootstrapping through this entire thing. But you know, with time, I just started telling myself, Muriel, if you're not calling yourself a food photographer, an educator, a content creator, and a recipe developer, no one else will. So you have to do it. And so I kind of just started embracing those titles. And even if sometimes I look at my work and I feel like, oh, I wish it could be better, or I wish I could improve this, or I wish I could have done this differently, or I look at other people's work and I think, wow, like I just wish one day my photography can look like that. I take my myself by the hand and bring me back to the present moment and tell myself, look how far you've come and this entire thing is a journey and every step along the way matters and you have to believe in yourself and you can make anything happen. So that's kind of the pep talk I give myself. Did you ever feel like quitting? No, uh, I've never <laughs> really felt like quitting. I guess because I'm an optimistic person in nature and I'm a person who deeply believes in reinvention of oneself and I believe that if ever something does go wrong or something happens and food photography just is no longer working and for one reason or another I think that I have the, the ability to reinvent myself and to create something new, to start a new career, to pursue something new. And I'm pretty confident in that I'll be able to, no matter what happens to me, find a way through and make it work. So yeah, I've never really felt like quitting because there's no real reason for quitting at the moment. Everything is going well. You know, I'm very lucky in that I'm able to, to do what I love for a living. And if ever it's no longer the case at some point, well, We'll just have to reinvent ourselves. <laughs> now, final category of this video, if you're still here, my goodness, props. I feel like this is gonna be a long one. <laughs> so this category is all about my future. The first question is, how has the transition into videography been compared to, to photography? Ha, <laughs> two words, brutal, painful. It has been a pain and it's been hard. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, the perfectionist in me was struggling <laughs> because one thing that I always tell my, some of my friends who ask me about videography, for me, one of the hardest things is the fact that, let's say you're taking a photo, like you're taking a photo of um, a shia pudding and then there's too much shia seeds in, in one spot of the photo. It's fine, you can take the photo, bring it into Photoshop and edit the extra shia seeds out. With videography, if there is something that you didn't do quite right and you didn't notice it while you were taking the video, well, you have two choices. Either publish it and pretend like it's not there or start over. And that's been really hard because as, as I said, I am a perfectionist and, and for me, I like to get things right. And that means that sometimes I need to take a take multiple times before it, it is actually exactly the way I want it to. And that's been very, uh, it's been a learning process. Also just learning a whole new program. I said I love technology, but whew, it's been tough learning Final Cut Pro. Uh, I still don't feel fully comfortable with it, but it, it has been a process to, to get the hang of it and to feel comfortable with it. But honestly, I'm really grateful I did because again, I, I believe that it's so important to be resilient, to push forward and to, to get yourself outside of your comfort zone. And you know, if it wasn't for this YouTube channel and videography, I wouldn't have connected with even more people and helped other people in their photography journey. So it's all worth it. Last question. There's only two questions in this category. Where do you, say, where do you see yourself in the future? Ah, oh, well, that's a very good question. There's, I see myself in many different places. One thing that I'd like to grow towards is becoming more of an independent artist what that means is having to rely a little bit less on client work and diversify my income in a way that I'm able to generate money through different things, uh, including, for example, uh, maybe ads on YouTube once I reach a certain amount of followers or uh, creating a course or doing workshops. 
that's kind of where I'd like life to go. I don't have very specific goals at this point. For me, one of the most important assessments that one needs to do is when they wake up every day to ask yourself, are you happy with what you're doing now? Are you happy with what you're doing today? And if that is the case, then you know, I think you're on the right track. And if it isn't the case, you know, we all have bad days and we all need sometimes to readjust a little bit. And if after a little bit of readjusting, you're still not happy, maybe it's time to try something else or reinvent yourself or do something new. And maybe that will happen for me. But at the moment, I'm honestly happy with what I do. I love food photography. I love creating content for you guys. And on that note, I just want to say again, a big thank you for every single one of you who has been following me on this YouTube channel. It's been quite a journey and I'm so grateful for all of your comments. Uh, every time I post, it's so inspiring for me to, to learn that I am helping other people connect with a passion and improve their skills when it comes to food photography. Yeah, I think that's about it. This is this was my Q&A, first ever Q&A video. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up, subscribe, share if you want to, but I feel like this video might not be a share type of video, uh, but maybe it is. And yeah, let me know in the comments below if there are some things that you'd like me to explore in uh, other videos or if there's something that you learned in this video, if you enjoyed this Q&A format. And on that note, I wish you a very beautiful rest of your day and uh, I'll talk to you soon.